look at the case study for chapter six, beginning with Java Jam. So in your chapter six student folders, um, remember you can open Explorer and open a folder and I've opened the Java Jam. Make sure you are opening from your chapter six uh, student files and go ahead and open our javajam.css index menu and music. And then if you wanna click this again to maximize your real estate on your screen. The instructions for this project start on page 293, and task one is telling you to copy some files over. There's some extra pictures. I've already done that for you, and I've done that in the Fish Creek and the Pacific Trails as well. So you'll start with task two, configure the CSS. Open Java Jam in a text editor, and we are going to configure the universal selector with a box sizing border box. I like to do that at the top. So let's scroll on up to the top of our CSS, and we'll add the asterisk, which is the universal selector. That means this rule is going to apply to all elements on every page that this CSS is applied to. Okay? So box sizing border box. Step two is on page 294. Configure ID selectors for the hero image on each page. Currently we have these images on our page. We are going to change those to be background images um, instead of having these images coded. And to do that, we're going to use IDs. So let's scroll all the way down in our CSS page and we're going to create a series of three IDs beginning with Hero Road. Configure an ID selector named Hero Road. Set the background image to Hero Road JPEG and configure a 100% background size and height of 250 pixels. So for a background image, remember we need to do URL. Once you have that, let's just copy and paste it. And we'll change this middle one is going to be Hero Mugs. And this last one is going to be Hero Guitar. Oh, that makes me think of Guitar Hero. Oh, such a fun game. Okay. Step three say, says to edit the style rules for the main selector so that the hero image will fill the entire area. So if we couldn't find it, um, it says edit so it already exists. We can do uh, Command F and look for our main section. And there it is. So change the left padding to zero, so we can just add a zero there. Change the right padding to zero. Configure a 250 pixel left margin and top padding of zero. Okay, so double check your main section, make sure it appears similar to mine. We added background color, padding top, margin left, and then we change the padding left and the padding right to zero. Step four says, since the main content area no longer has any left or right padding, we're going to configure descendant selectors um, so that those elements within the main element have a 3M left and a 2M right padding. So a descendant selector is a selector, so we're gonna say, I'm scrolling down to the bottom, we're going to say go to the main section and find any H2s. Then go to the main section and find any H3s. Go to the main section and find any H4s. Okay, and when you finish, you should have something like this. Each selector, since we're applying the same rule, to multiple selectors, even if they're descendant selectors, we can separate those with commas. Okay, step five says configure the left column navigation area. Add style declarations to the nav element 
to configure an area that floats to the left and is 200 pixels wide. So find your nav section and we're going to do float left width 200 pixels. Oh, see my typo. Step six says configure the colon link, colon visited, and colon hover pseudo classes for the navigation hyperlinks. Um, and it's got our text colors there. So you can add it here. I'm just going to add it right below my nav A's, or you could put it at the end, your choice. Now, because we only want the anchors targeted that are inside the nav section, we do nav A colon. And remember, we have to type these pseudo classes in order. Okay, copy over those pseudo classes. Make sure that you do not put a space after your A colon between link and visited and hover. That's the most common mistake I see um, when coding pseudo classes. Step seven says you will organize the navigation hyperlinks within an unordered list in a later task. The navigation area does not show list markers, so we need to code a nav UL descendant selector to configure the unordered list in the navigation area only to display without list markers. So let's just add that here. We'll do nav ul and to remove the list markers, which is that little dot we do, list style type none. And it said a padding left of zero. Step eight, modify the wrapper ID. So here's our wrapper ID. Configure a dark color background. So we're going to change this background. 231814. And that's going to display behind the column of the navigation, um, behind the navigation column. It'll be a dark color. Modify the H4 selector rules. So the H4s are only on our music page. And there we want the text currently in, on our music page. If we take a quick look in the browser, these H4s are sentence case. So we want them to be all uppercase. So without changing our actual text on our page, we can add a text transform property and do uppercase. And that will make that January and February appear in uppercase. Um, we also want to change the way that our images float on that play that page. So we're going to configure a new class. Go down to the bottom, and if you recall, classes start with periods. We are going to code this class to have a name float left. And it will float left with 20 pixels of right and bottom padding. So make sure you add that right and bottom padding. Step 11 says modify the style rules for the details class to overflow auto. So we'll do overflow auto. And then since we want our content to be compatible on old browsers, Let's go back up to the top and where we have our universal selector. We only need to type the HTML5 elements that we have used in our web page. So we've only used header, nav, main, and footer. So those are the ones we'll do display block. All right, if we refresh in a browser, we have a page currently looking like this. So it still needs a lot of work. So let's move on to task three. Step one under task three says add the following HTML5 shim code in the head section of the web page link um, to allow our pages to display property properly on Internet Explorer 8 and earlier versions. So inside the head, anywhere really inside the head, but we're saying uh, right before the head closes, 
And if you have this typed in an earlier project, you can copy it over. Um, if not, type it this one time and then we'll copy it over from now on. Step two says configure. Oh, if you didn't catch on, I'm on the index page. <laughs> Hope you caught on to that. Um, step two says configure the left column navigation area, which is contained within the nav element. So here we are in the nav element. We want to remove any MBSPs that may be present and code an unordered list to organize the navigation hyperlinks. Each hyperlink needs to be contained within LI tags. So we'll have an opening unordered list after our nav opens, and this unordered list will close before our nav closes. So you'll have something like this. And then each anchor tag needs to be encapsulated or enclosed in LI tags. So you'll have an opening LI tag, your anchor, then you'll have a closing LI tag. Okay, double check your code to make sure you have your LIs and ULs in the correct location. Step three says to remove the image tag windingroad.jpg. So this was the image we added way back in chapter two. We're going to delete that and configure a div element assigned to hero road ID between the opening main tag and the opening H2 tag. Now, this div is going to be empty. There's not going to be any um, elements or anything in it. We're just assigning the ID hero road that we configured earlier in our CSS. And this is going to add the background image. So now if we load this in the browser, we have our image here. Now notice here, the image is starting to repeat. Okay, so we could go back to our CSS to fix this issue. And in our hero mugs, instead of having a background size of just 100, do a background size of 100 space 100. So that's saying 100% of the height and 100% of the width. Okay. And now if we refresh, we've taken care of that. Okay. Now, on to the menu page. We have our menu page open. We want to configure the left column navigation area and the shim in the same manner. So instead of going through and redoing all of this that we did with the ULs and the LIs, I'm going to go back to index and copy everything. Well, I'm just going to copy my whole nav section from opening nav to closing nav and then go to menu and I'll select that and I'll do a command. Oh, I didn't copy it. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, no, I didn't mean to cut. I meant to copy. Copy. I did a command C and then a command V to paste. Messed up again. No, I'm not. We're good. We're good. And I'm, we're going to do that with music. So I'm going to go ahead and do it for music too. Here we go. All right. Now we're good. Now it also wants us to copy that shim. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that shim and even though it's only giving the instructions for me to do this with the menu, I am indeed letting you know that you're going to copy that shim to all of your pages. So if you want to go ahead and do it while you have it on the clipboard, go right ahead. Okay. Then um, remove the image tag for the mugs JPEG image. So this is the image that we have here right before H2. And again, we're going to configure a div assigned to hero mugs, just like we did in the previous example. And then if we test in the browser, oh, it didn't close my div tag. If we view in the browser, ta-da. All right, that looks good. Check and make sure yours looks similar. Now, task five says we're going to work with the music configure the left column navigation area so um, with the high uh, with the hyperlinks so we've already done that and add the HTML5 shim which we've done that and we're going to configure an element assigned to hero guitar between the opening main tag 
and the H2. Um, to configure, our, so let's take a look at what this looks like right now. Do Alt B. Okay, so now we have the guitar here. And we want to change the way these appear. Notice that that text transformation caused this to be um, all uppercase. We want to configure our thumbnail images to float left. So we need to add the class float left to the image tag for each thumbnail image. So for each of our thumbnail images, which we have coded as image source, um, where are our thumbnail? Right here. So for each image, anywhere inside that, I'm going to add it at the end, we'll do class equals float left. And then again for Tahoe Greg, after our height, I'll do class equals float left. Now if we save and view in the browser, nothing changed. Oh, because I didn't have it stretched out enough, but yes, now they are over here. Well, they were over here before, but the text was messed up. It worked. It did what it was supposed to do. Um, okay. I hate when I do this. I got almost to the end of the video and I noticed I made a mistake. When I typed the class here, I included a semicolon. No need for a semicolon there. And that did cause a minor mistake on the page because the text was appearing down here and now it's appearing up here. So now we're right. Sorry about the typo.